Welcome to Fuvi's Solid Courses Demos. Hot AI 15-minute lecture based on MIT 8.04, Quantum Physics 1, Lecture 1, Introduction to Superposition, taught by Professor Alan Adams. The voice is AI dubbed from Professor Adams' original lecture. Welcome to the first lecture, Introduction to Superposition. The logic of this lecture is based on a discussion in the first few chapters of a book by David Albert called Quantum Mechanics and Experience. Today I want to describe a set of experiments with electrons. To my mind, they are the most unsettling experiments ever done. They've been performed and the results, exactly as I'll describe them, are true. I'll focus on two properties of electrons, which I'll call color and hardness. And the empirical fact is that every electron that's ever been observed is either black or white and no other color. We've never seen a blue electron. There are no green electrons. No one has ever found a fluorescent electron. They're either black or they are white. It is a binary property. Secondly, their hardness is either hard or soft. They're never squishy. No one's ever found one that dribbles. They are either hard or they are soft. It's also a binary property. Now, what I mean by this is that it is possible to build a device which measures the color and the hardness. In particular, it is possible to build a box, which I will call a color box, that measures the color. And the way it works is this. It has three apertures, an in port, and two out ports, one which sends out black electrons and one which sends out white electrons. Okay, and the utility of this box is that the color can be inferred from the position. If you find the particle, the electron over here, it is a white electron. If you find the electron here, it is a black electron. Cool? Similarly, we can build a hardness box, which again has three apertures, an in port and two out ports. And hard electrons come out this port and soft electrons come out this port. A key property of these hardness and color boxes is repeatability. If I send random electrons into a color box and one comes out the white aperture, then I send it through another color box, I can be 100% confident 100% of the time it will come out the white aperture again and 0% of the time will it come out the black aperture. Now, do the same with hardness. If I send a bunch of electrons into a hardness box and take out the ones that come out soft, then send them again into another hardness box, they'll come out soft with 100% confidence 100% of the time. They never come out the hard aperture. So here's a natural question. Might the color and the hardness of an electron be related? And more precisely, might they be correlated? Might knowing the color infer something about the hardness? So the question is, suppose we know an electron is white. Does that determine its hardness? We can answer this with our boxes. Here's what I'll do. I'll take a random set of electrons and send them into a color box. About half come out white, and about half come out black. Now I take those which come out the white aperture, and I want to know, does white determine hardness? To do that, I then send these white electrons into a hardness box and see what comes out. What we find is that 50% of the electrons incident on the hardness box come out hard, and 50% come out soft. So if you take a white electron and send it into a hardness box, it's even odds. 50% hard, 50% soft. And ditto in reverse, if you take a soft electron and send it into a color box, you again get 50-50, even odds, 50% black and 50% white. So knowing the color does not give you any information about the hardness. And knowing the hardness does not give you any information about the color. These are independent facts, independent properties. So no, they're not correlated. Let's try another experiment. First a color box, then a hardness box, then another color box. So color in, black and white out. We take the white electrons and send them into the hardness box. They come out hard and soft. Now take the soft ones and send them into the second color box. The question is, what do we predict? What, what percentage black, what percentage white? Well, let's think through the logic. Anything reaching the second hardness box must have first been measured as white by the color box. As you can see here, colors are repeatable, white in, white out. So the prediction that we'll get 100% white and 0% black seems reasonable. OK. If that's the case, the prediction is 100% white and 0% black. Now, let's see what the experiment actually shows. In fact, what happens is that half of these electrons come out white and half come out black, 50-50. This is really kind of troubling. These electrons were previously measured to be white, yet now they are sometimes white, sometimes black, 50-50% of the time. So you can't think of the electron as a little ball with black and soft written on it. I should emphasize, the same thing happens with other combinations, black to white, hard to soft, C to H, and so on. Each gives the same result, 
Apparently, the hardness box tampers with the color somehow. These results were tremendously strange at the time. Naturally, people were suspicious, and they tried all sorts of moves to explain them. So this is suspicious. So here's the first natural move. The first natural move is, oh, look, surely there's some additional property of the electron that we just haven't measured yet that determines whether it comes out the second color box black or white. Right? There's got to be some property that determines this. And so people have spent a tremendous amount of time and energy looking at these initial electrons and looking with great care to see whether there's any sort of uh, feature of these incident electrons which determines which port they come out of. And the shocker is no one's ever found such a property. No one has ever found a property which determines which port it comes out of. As far as we can tell, it is completely random. OK, well, there's another way to come at this. You could say, look, you ran this experiment. That's fine. But look, I, I've met the guy who built these boxes. And look, he's just some guy, right? And he just didn't do a very good job, right? The boxes are just badly built. So here's the way to defeat that argument. No, we've built these things out of different materials, using different technologies, using electrons, using neutrons, using buckyballs, C60. Seriously, it's been done. And as we'll see later, Bell's inequality shows that it's intrinsically unpredictable, non-deterministic, truly random. There's no way to know in advance whether an electron will come out black or white from the second box. In other words, you can't build a box like this that tells you what color and hardness an electron is. In particular, it would have one in port and four out ports. And its ports would say, well, one is white and hard, and one is white and soft, one is black and hard, and one is black and soft. Can you build a color hardness box like this? So for example, here's something you might imagine. Take your incident electrons and first send them into a color box. And take those white electrons and send them into a hardness box. And take those electrons, and this is going to be white and hard, and this is going to be white and soft. And similarly, send these black electrons into the hardness box, and here's hard and black, and here's soft and back. Okay? But I am sorry, I, this box can't be built. The reason is not because our experiments are crude. It's because of something much more fundamental, something deeper, something in principle, which is encoded in this awesome experiment, 50% white, 50% black. Not all black like this, and not all white like this. Also, it does not mean anything to say it is hard and black simultaneously. That is uncertainty. And again, uncertainty is an idea we're going to come back to over and over again throughout our quantum courses. So this won't work. Now, I want to design for you a slightly more elaborate experimental apparatus. For this, I want you to consider the following devices. Here's a hardness box. It has an in port, a hard aperture, and a soft aperture. And now, in addition to this hardness box, we have two more elements, two mirrors. And what these mirrors do is they take the incident electrons and change the direction of motion, nothing else. Let me explain this here. If I take one of these mirrors and a harness box here, and I take the soft electrons that come out, and I bounce them off the mirror, and then I send these into another box, and then they come out soft 100% of the time. It does not change the observable harness. All it does is change the direction. Back to our apparatus, I'm going to add another slightly fancy set of mirrors. All they do is join these beams together into a single beam. And again, this doesn't change the color or harness. If you send in a hard electron, you get a hard electron out. If you send in a soft electron from here, you get a soft electron out here. So here's my apparatus. And I'm going to put this inside a big box. Now, I will run some experiments with this apparatus. The first experiment, I'm going to send in white electrons. And I'm going to measure hardness at out. So this is my apparatus. Send in white and measure the hardness at the output. And to measure the hardness, I throw these electrons into a hardness box and see what comes out. So this is experiment one. Now the question is, how many electrons come out the hard aperture? And how many electrons come out the soft aperture of this final hardness box? As we discussed earlier, if you take a white electron and send it into the hardness box, 50% of the time it comes out the hard aperture, and 50% of the time it comes out the soft aperture. Now these mirrors do nothing to the hardness. And you know that a hard electron entering a second hardness box remains hard. And the same for a soft electron. 
So the prediction for hard soft after the second hardness box is 50-50. And that's exactly what the experiment shows. Now, I want to run the second experiment. And the second experiment, same as the first, we're going to send in hard electrons. And we're going to measure color it out. Again, let's look at the apparatus. We send in hard electrons into a hardness box with a hard and a soft aperture. And now we're going to measure the color at the output. Now I want to know what fraction comes out black and what fraction comes out white, as we've already done this experiment. If you send a hard electron into the hardness box, 100% of the time it comes out the hard aperture. The mirrors do nothing to the hardness. And you know that a hard electron entering the color box, and what comes out? Well, we've done that experiment too. Hard into color 50-50. So the prediction for black and white after entering the color box is 50-50. And that's exactly what the experiment shows. Now, the third experiment. It has the same structure as the second. However, the input that comes in the harness box is white instead of hard. And the question is the same. How many come out black and how many come out white? To make a prediction, let's review the experiment we've just discussed earlier. The structure is white into hardness box, color box, and the result is always 50% black, 50% white out. So if these mirrors do nothing, the two experiments are the same. It seems reasonable to predict 50% black and 50% white here. However, the experiment shows otherwise. It's always 100% white, 0% black. It's tremendously strange. The electrons are in a profound way of being, hard, soft, white, or black as they move along two paths inside the apparatus and then join into a single output port. We'll break these paths down in experiment four and define this strange being afterward. Let's move on to that now. Now experiment four, it continues experiment three to explore what is going on inside the apparatus. We'll block each of the two paths in turn and compare the outcomes with the all open case in experiment three. First, we block the soft path with a wall. No electrons can go through this wall, so the path ends here. This mirror is of no use, and no electrons come into this mirror from below. Now, if I send in 100 white electrons, what do you predict the outcome will be? How many black and how many white out here? After the hardness box, as you know, 50 go into the soft path and 50 into the hard path, but the soft path has ended, so only 50 come out. Referring back to experiment three, you might predict the outcome to be 50 white and zero black half the numbers we saw in experiment three. That seems reasonable, right? However, the experiment shows otherwise. Half of 100, 50 come out in total, just as we predicted. But only 50% of these are white, 25, not all 50, and the other 50% are black, 25, not zero. Now we open the soft path and block the hard path. The experiment shows the same result. Half of 100 equals 50 in total. Of these, 50% white equals 25, and 50% black equals 25. In summary, experiment four shows this. If a single electron takes just one path inside the apparatus, either soft or hard, it comes out 50% white and 50% black. In no case is it 100% white and 0% black. Now let's look back at experiment three with both paths open. If we send a single white electron into the apparatus, it always comes out 100% white and 0% black. So here's the question. What path does it take inside the apparatus? Is it hard or is it soft? as it travels through. Let's check all the possibilities. One, hard path. No, because the output must be half white and half black. Two, soft path. No, the same as the hard path, the output must be half white and half black. Three, both paths. No, an electron can always be measured on one path, never on both at the same time. Four, neither path. No, if we block both paths, there's no output at all. So what the heck is going on? What we're facing is this. For all electrons in the apparatus, the route they take is not a hard path, not a soft path, not both paths, and not no path at all. There don't seem to be any other logical possibilities. So what are they doing anyway? If the experiments are accurate and the arguments correct, then the electrons are doing something we've never dreamed of before, something for which, at the moment, we don't even have words. Electrons have modes of moving, or modes of being, unlike anything we've discussed so far. The same is true for molecules, bacteria, even macroscopic objects, though the effects are much harder to detect. Physicists call these modes superposition, which for now essentially means we have no clue what's really going on. To move beyond calling superposition just we have no clue what's going on, we need a new language, the language of quantum mechanics. Its foundations will be the subject of 8.04. No matter how we describe it, 
Superposition is really weird, but it's true. That's the end of video lecture one. Thank you for watching.